Hello, I'm Jonathan Sapovitz, the co-director of the Consortium for Policy Research and Education and a professor of educational policy and leadership at the Graduate School of Education at the University of Pennsylvania. Welcome to the CPRI Knowledge Hub's Cool Thinking on Hot Topics. Cool Thinking are a series of short videos that explore a substantive challenge in the education field from the perspectives of researchers, policymakers, and other educational experts. The goal of these series is to bring together members of these three communities to have conversations and improve the field. In this series, we're talking about a topic that's been hot for a long time, how to effectively build the capacity of educators to improve student learning. Next to the recruitment of teachers, building capacity through professional development is the major way to improve the knowledge and skills of teachers and school leaders. So this is a topic that should be on the top of every state and local policymaker's mind. The challenge of what makes for effective professional development at scale is an issue that's puzzled program designers and policymakers and researchers alike for many years. While there are many examples of professional development programs that have improved adult and student outcomes, the research is far from clear about how to do this reliably and consistently. In this series, I'm going to speak with researchers who are on the cutting edge studying professional development, innovative program designers, a clinical psychologist, and district leaders who are working on different approaches to professional development to see what we can learn to improve upon current approaches. The basic logic of professional development is actually pretty straightforward. Professional development will ideally change teaching practices which will, in turn, increase student learning. But of course, things are a lot more complicated than that. So we can think of a lot of different factors that are very influential in this simple sequence. So for example, let's say that current teaching practice is here, we'll specify that as X, and desired teaching practice is over here, and we'll describe that as Y. And of course, the distance between current practice and desired practice could be very close together so that when a teacher enters professional development, they could be teaching in a way that's already pretty close to the desired practice, or they could be very far away from that desired practice. Now, we know many things that influence the current way that teachers teach, and probably one of the dominant factors that influence the current ways that teachers teach is that the way they were taught as kids. So the way they were taught is, has a big influence on their current practices. And other factors that influence how they teach include their beliefs, their prior professional development, and the context within which they are operating, or their peers, their social relations. So when we introduce teachers to ways of teaching through professional development, there are a lot of ways that their current practice could be influenced towards desired practice. So for example, teachers may layer a new way of teaching on top of their prior teaching practices. Or they might pick and choose small pieces of the new practices and add them to their old practices. Or perhaps teachers might just combine the new way of teaching with their prior teaching, as in X plus Y. It's also possible that teachers would predominantly teach in the new way, but they would still have some vestiges of the old way, as in Y superscript X. So there's a lot of different ways that professional development could interact with current teaching practices to produce many different versions of what the desired practice is that we hope professional development would produce for teachers. And in this series, what we're going to do is to explore some of the research and what we know about practice about how professional development influences teachers and leaders' current practices. Starting in the late 1990s, a tremendous effort was made to distill the attributes of what made up effective professional development. These included, for starters, a strong focus on content knowledge. David Cohen and Heather Hill, who studied math reforms in California in the late 1990s, amongst others, have found that professional development that is aimed at improving content knowledge is associated with changes in teaching practices. But just having strong content knowledge isn't enough. And this is a point that's made about a recent large study that we're going to learn about in this series 
that focused on building teachers' content knowledge, which changed their content knowledge, but not their teaching practices nor the performance of their students. How content is delivered to learners is an, another really important topic. Lee Shulman of Stanford was the first to build on the idea of pedagogical content knowledge and the need for teachers not only to know the content of their subjects, but how to apply it in the classroom. For Shulman, there was a stark difference between understanding what is being taught and understanding how to effectively deliver content to students. Professional development should also be embedded in practice so that learners get a chance to try out new ideas on their own. This is the idea underlying some research by Mary Kennedy, who I'll also speak to in the series, who focused on the inherent problem of having professional development focus on good ideas, but having teachers have trouble translating it back to their own settings and their own curriculum. Another tenet of effectiveness that the research literature commonly points to is sustained professional development. In other words, if learners get to focus on something over time, it's more likely that they'll incorporate it into their regular practices. And this was a major finding of a 2001 study on a national sample of teachers that was conducted by my colleagues here at the University of Pennsylvania, Andy Porter and Laura Desimone, as well as Mike Garrett. Another element of what makes up effective professional development is active learning. Suzanne Wilson and Jennifer Burns' 2000 studies show how t sh of how teachers learn are a nice example of how when teachers were engaged in their professional development experiences, it really influenced their practices. Finally, but not least, we know that what professional development advocates for educators needs to be supported by the systems that surround them so that when teachers and school leaders get back to their schools, the systems around them are aligned and supportive of the practices they're trying to adopt rather than creating some kind of friction or disincentives for them. So, content knowledge, teaching approaches or pedagogical content knowledge, connections to practice, a chance to learn over time, active engagement, and alignment with and supported by the, by the surrounding system, these are at least six of the major components that researchers have distilled from investigating different professional development programs. As a matter of fact, whenever I read a research paper on professional development, I see this list or some facsimile of it mentioned in the review of the literature. However, despite a seeming consensus around these basic tenets, the research base on the effectiveness of professional development on teachers and students is surprisingly thin. There are relatively few rigorous studies that demonstrate the effects of professional development on improved teaching and improved student learning. So what is going on in the field today that can help us learn more about this essential element for educational improvement? What we plan to do over the course of this Cool Thinking series is to dig into this topic by talking to leading program developers, researchers, and practitioners about what they're learning that builds upon the knowledge base as we try to solve the gap between understanding what goes into effective professional development and actually making it happen. I think you'll learn some new things about innovative approaches like coaching, creating professional networks, how teachers psychologically receive professional development, and some new ideas about aligning professional development with teacher need rather than externally identified topics. The overall goal of this video series is for you to hear from providers, researchers, and local implementers who engage with or study various professional development approaches to take away some valuable lessons about how to think about professional development in your specific setting. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to professional development, but by providing a window of how people on the leading edge think about professional development, we hope to stimulate a conversation here on the Knowledge Hub and in your own context. Enjoy watching. <music>